Sounds like football, baby. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome into the Fantasy Football Smackdown. It is Tuesday, Waiver Wire Show. I'm your host, Kyle August. You can follow me on Twitter at KyleMonth8. It's been a weird week, of course, uh, this first week of the Fantasy Playoffs. If you had a bye, be grateful. Uh, It was a wild ride. Started off great with that uh, Chargers-Chiefs matchup that produced a ton of fantasy points. And then since then, it's been pretty much downhill from there. But uh, hopefully you advance if you did have to play this week. I am recording this on Tuesday morning. So we still have two more games in week 15. It's uh, It's been crazy ride with all the COVID changes. So obviously adjust any wave wire claims uh, or notes here from this show based off any news that will or or I say could, but will come out more than likely uh, later on today or throughout the week. Again, two more games. We have the Rams, Seahawks, and then Washington football team and the Eagles still to play as of recording this. So a lot of things pending there. Then we have a quick turnaround week until uh, Thursday where we have the Titans 49ers game. And then again, more weekend matchups on Saturday as well. So if you're still in the playoffs, be nimble. You got to be uh not only adding players for your own benefit and making sure your lineups are set, but blocking your opponents is just as key. There's nothing wrong with winning a championship because you did the right thing and stashed somebody that you didn't even need, but your opponent may have. So keep that in mind. Don't get lazy here. There are plenty of good options on the waiver wire still as less and less teams are remaining active on the waiver wire this late into the season. So with that, uh, let's just dive right into it. Got the, uh, rankings and percentages here on the uh, on the screen if you're watching on YouTube now it looks like we're good to go here so let's roll into this thing top three ads regardless of position as usual 50% ownership is the threshold and this is it people Leonard Fournette expected to miss some time Ronald Jones at 37% owned whether you need him or not should be what you are spending all of your remaining money on there is no guarantee that somebody next week will be any better Ronald Jones, if not already stashed, should be on your roster after today. 37% owned. Stash him now. Get him off of waivers. Even if you don't need him, play prevent offense. Uh, it sounds like Ronald or it sounds like Leonard Fournette is going to miss at least this week, maybe more. But regardless, you're looking at uh Carolina and the Jets the next two weeks. If you had Ronald Jones on your roster, you're probably feeling pretty good. So my JP Ryan number two right now at 13% owned. Not confirmed yet whether Joe Mixon will be out or not, but he had an ankle injury. You'd have to expect he's going to miss at least a game, uh, but we will see. But P. Ryan, again, stashed no matter what. And then number three, regardless of position on the rankings here, is Amon Ross St. Brown, who's been on absolute fire for the Lions. More on him as we get to the wide receivers. All right, quarterback streamers for week 16. I I pray that you already have your quarterback lined up, uh, but due to injuries and COVID and such, you may want to stash one of these guys as a backup. Jimmy G., would be the top ad for me at Tennessee. I know he didn't do great last week, even with a good matchup, another good matchup this upcoming week against the Titans on Thursday night football, 41% owned. Uh, I, if Again, if you're stuck, I, I could take a shot on Jimmy G. If you were a Lamar owner, maybe you didn't like your fill-in last week, um, you could consider Garoppolo. Number two on this list, again, and don't forget, Garoppolo plays on Thursday, so uh, it'd be a quick turn to plug and play him in off a of stream. Tyler Huntley's number two against the Cincinnati Bengals at 5% old. Obviously, it was QB1 last week with Lamar Jackson out. Threw for two, ran for two against the Packers. Get Cincinnati this week. But Lamar's status is still up in the air. So if you even if you add Huntley, he might not be a player that you could even use this upcoming week. So a lot of warts on the rest of these guys. Justin Fields has been running the ball a little bit more against Seattle. Seattle will be on a shorter week, week even than the Bears at 26% on. You could take a shot on the rookie. And then Jared Goff who's had 20 fantasy points in two of his last three against the Atlanta Falcons is only 7% owned, but golf landed on the COVID list on Monday due to the new NFL protocols. He could test his way off uh, depending on his vaccination status, but keep an eye on that. Again, hopefully you do not have to stream QBs this late in the season where you should really be spending your waiver wire fab and priority is on the running back position at the top of the board. Like I mentioned earlier, Ronald Jones, 37% owned Samaj P Ryan, 13% owned with the starters in Tampa and Cincy going down. Fournette already uh, ruled potentially like looking like he's out already mix it with an ankle sprain, not sounding great. Um, I would definitely be stashing these guys regardless 
If I have any extra bench room, I'm putting these guys on my roster. Duke Johnson comes in at number three. He's 2% owned. Surprisingly took over the Miami backfield with Miles Gaskin being activated midweek from the COVID list. I don't expect Duke Johnson to be the lead back for the Dolphins going forward, though. I think Gaskin was just worked back a little bit slow after being on the COVID list for over a week. Came back midweek. Uh, who knows how much practice time he really got there. I still think Gaskin's the guy. Plus, you talk about Philip Lindsay returning from injury or from the COVID list. Uh, that's another factor here, along with Malcolm Brown also returning from injury reserve, who practiced all last week. And add in that the Miami Dolphins play the New Orleans Saints this upcoming week, and that is a very, very tough, stout run defense. So I would be very, very cautious about Duke Johnson. Amir Abdullah at number four on this list at 8% owned, played the majority of the snaps over Hubbard, had the touchdown on Sunday, uh, has a tougher matchup against Buffalo on the ground, but that could lead to Amir Abdullah getting some work through the air. And number five on this list is Craig Reynolds, who's been an absolute monster for the Lions the last two weeks at 13% owned. But... We just had Jamal Williams activated from the COVID list on Monday. Do they ride with Reynolds still, or do they go back to a split potentially? And then is Swift still out? He has not been put on IR. He just He keeps uh, logging DMPs throughout the week and then is ruled out on Fridays. So I would assume that Swift's going to be out, but I would also assume that Jamal Williams will come back to a decent workload and Reynolds' fantasy value could go up in smoke, but still worth stashing just in case. Wide receivers. Uh, one guy that's right at 50% own is Russell Gage. Honestly, he was a guy that I didn't really trust, but he's been awesome in over the last month, 15 plus fantasy points in three of his last four. And of course the Atlanta Falcons get the Detroit lions at home this Sunday. Amon Ross St. Brown comes in at number two, 30% own 11 or more targets in each game over the last three weeks with Swift and Hawkinson out. St. Brown's been an absolute study. Can't be overlooked. Needs to be added. He's only 30% owned. Gabriel Davis coming off a big week, two touchdowns on Sunday. He's only 19% owned. He has four touchdowns over his last three games. And with the Buffalo Bills missing Emmanuel Sanders on Sunday, Davis put up a monster week for fantasy owners. However, at 19% owned, I am adding Gabriel Davis, but I am not adding him to play him this week. I know it's tough to stash players at this time of the year, but if you have extra roster spots, I am trying to stash Gabriel Davis. Hope that Emmanuel Sanders remains out for the next uh, two weeks because this week the Buffalo Bills play the New England Patriots. Not sure I want much going up against the Pats, but in week 17, the fantasy championship game, Gabriel Davis and the Bills will be playing the Atlanta Falcons. That's a matchup out target for Gabe Davis. Number four on this list is Josh Reynolds. This is very dependent on Jared Goff being active. St. Brown value would dip as well, but Reynolds would pretty much become hands off if Goff was out this week. Reynolds at 10% owned has 60 plus yards in three of his last four and two touchdowns over that span as well, but has taken a backseat to the rookie St. Brown in Detroit. Number five on this list is Nick Westbrook Aquina at 21% owned, six or more targets in three of his last four. But the reason to note him here is Julio Jones trying to work his way back from injury, left the game on Sunday. I would expect him probably to miss some time. A.J. Brown activated from IR, but uh, this would be the first week he was eligible for that. So keep an eye on his status. If both those Tennessee wide receivers were out on the Titans short week, Westbrook Aquina could be a start for the Titans as they face off against the 49ers on Thursday night football. Tight end streamers for week 16 coming off a nice game on Monday night football, while be it in garbage time a little bit was still second year tight end Cole Komet. He's playing against the Seattle Seahawks at 25% owned. He has two 10 point games over the last month, seven or more targets in three of those three of those four games. So he's getting funneled a little bit, but this bears offense is still pretty inept. Not a lot of great streaming options here, obviously at tight end. So uh, hopefully again, you have somebody, but with Travis Kelsey being put on the COVID list, while he could return to play, you probably should be stashing at least one of these guys if they're available in your league. Got to have that contingency plan in place. Number two on this list, also coming off a pretty decent Monday night game was Foster Moreau, 13% owned. Coming off a stinker, he had nine targets last uh, last night, Monday night, what brings him to 15 over the last two weeks without Darren Waller. Waller has not practiced yet. So I, it's probably, you can probably lean towards the fact that Waller will be inactive again this week, but Foss Moreau would be a stash just in case. It is a tough matchup for Moreau going up against the Denver Broncos. Number three on this list is Ricky Seals Jones. He'll be facing off against the Dallas Cowboys. Ricky Seals Jones is 15% owned, but is pending a Tuesday night matchup tonight. So adjust as you see fit. 
One thing I would note on RSJ is that he was playing less than his usual snap percentage in his first week back, uh, giving some up to the rookie Bates there in Washington. So if RSJ is back to his usual snap percentage, I'm okay rolling him out there, but it's a tough matchup against the Cowboys in week 16. And number four on this list probably would be my favorite if I had any uh, confidence in him being the guy. I know he didn't catch the touchdown on Monday night, but David Njoku, who had an almost touchdown, shout out to Adam Azer, uh, is only 20% owned. If Austin Hooper was still out, who is he is currently on the COVID list, I would be perfectly fine picking up Njoku and playing him as a desperation play at 20% owned. But again, hopefully you do not have to deal with these streamers. But with Kelsey being put on COVID IR uh, for the time being, you there might be another player uh, in the tight end streaming market this week in your league. Last but not least, DST streamers. This one's right at 50% owned as well as the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, they get the Houston Texans. That's going to be in Houston. The Chargers are 50% owned, but if they were available in your league, they would be my top add. Number two, though, at the sub 50, so that uh, would be the Seattle Seahawks. They're going to be at home on a short week, but against the Chicago Bears, whose offense can't move the damn ball. 35% owned Seattle Seahawks would be my number one streamer outside of the Chargers. And number three, a little bit sneakier here. They're only 8% owned, which is, I believe, fifth or sixth lowest per ownership percentage among the DSTs. But I would take a shot on the Raiders. I know they didn't produce great against third string quarterback Nick Mullins, but you're going to have Drew Locke out there slinging it around the yard in Vegas. So the Raiders at 8% owned would be a fine streaming option as well. So there you have it. Appreciate you bearing with me here as the NFL schedule shifted around. Wanted to wait to get this out, have as much news as possible. Again, a lot of things pending, a lot of things up in the air with all the COVID tests throughout the NFL. So if you follow me on Twitter at Kyle Month 8, any big adjustments to this list will be up there as well. But with that, stay tuned in, locked in this week, as we're going to have the Dynasty War Zone coming at you on Wednesday per usual with Memphis and Jerry. And I'll be back on Thursday with a start sit show as well. Uh, waiver wire sniping will be up this week, weekend, uh, but probably pending there with the holiday. So again, as long as you're subscribed on YouTube, you'll get all this content. Appreciate you tuning in this entire season. Hopefully you had a successful week 15 or moving straight on to the semifinals. Best of luck this week and good luck on the wire. Catch you guys next later on in the week.